I'm Gerald Solomon. This is gonna be a conversation. We have people from literally the Pacific Ocean to the Atlantic Ocean who are on this call. They're all students in school. They're, I believe, all high school students, and they're part of their local NACEP club. So I'd like to start, and I'll start with the ladies first, if you don't mind. And I'm gonna ask you, if you could, just share your name, your school, and why you joined the NACEF club in your school. So let's go ahead and start with Chamara, if you could please. And remember to unmute yourself when you talk. All right. Hello, my name is Shamara Spence. I am with Regenerate Tech. I was really interested in joining the NACEF club because it was really amazing to see how games and esports could bring together people of different backgrounds. Awesome. Olivia. Can't hear you, Olivia. Let's see if we can get that fixed. While you're getting that fixed, let me move on if I could. And let's go to um, Samuel. Yes. Um... What school are you from? And why did you join the NASA club? I am from South Dade Senior like, High. I joined I joined NASEF during my freshman year mainly because I always felt like when I was first hearing any announcements, I felt like it was something that I could be a part of because I love video games and just I felt like I could be a part of something bigger than myself. Cool. Olivia, you got your audio working? Um, I think so. Is it working? Yes, now? you do. Okay. Perfect. Hi. Way to go. Um, I'm Olivia. I'm from Iolani School in Honolulu, Hawaii. And I joined my school's esports club because I was a new student when I joined, and I really wanted to find a place where I could make friends who had similar interests as I did. Very cool. So let's stay in Hawaii. Reed, how about you? Hi, I'm Reed. I'm also from Iolani School. I kind of just joined the esports club because I wanted to compete while playing games. Got it. So let's go now to Villa Park, and we have Xander. And Tyler, so I you know, kind of gave it away and said, what school? So tell us what state you're in and why you joined the NACEF club. Hi, um, I'm Xander Hinman. Um, I, we're, we're at Villa Park High School and um, in Villa Park, California. And this is Tyler. Hello, I'm Tyler Hunt. Um, so the reason why we joined eSports is because we haven't ever experienced anything like this. This was extremely monumental to us to see all this stuff coming together in terms of, <laughs> um, yeah. And it was just great to, well, got Larius back there, our coach. <laughs> um, He's doing his coach, job, huh? Yeah. Coaching you. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, he, he's been outstanding. Like we've we been, couldn't have done it without him. Absolutely not. He's the one who got us into it. He did an amazing job. And if, if it wasn't for him, we would not have this club for no, sure. It, it's just been an amazing experience all around. I can't wait to end it in my uh, senior year. And cool. I plan to have as many kids experience this, but even better because we are currently Evolving, we've got, we've been sponsored. We've had a lot of donations. It's been an extremely amazing four years for us. And we can't Great. Uh, so let wait me for it to keep going with uh, the newer people. Let me stay with you for a second. And if you're comfortable answering it, what's the best part for you guys to be in the NACEF club at Villa Park? And then after that, I'll go around for those of you who want to answer. We'd like your input also as to what's the best part of being you know, in the NACEF club. So let's start with Villa Park. 
Um, the best part for me has definitely been uh, working working with everyone and meeting so many new friends because I would I'm most of my friends I've met through esports and I I feel like I, I'm a lot closer to them than I would have been otherwise and I might not have even met anyone if um, I haven't had to join esports. Yeah. Um... So um, I'll, I'm going next, right? All right. So the best part about NASF and for esports. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Larios. Yeah, all our technical stuff. Um, but the best part for us, for me in, in particular, I'm the one who's been moderating a lot of stuff. I'm the one who's been um, with Larios. Us two have been the people to make all of our teams of. Um, the ones who have helped with tryouts, meetings, um, community game nights. Of this past month has been busier than it has been for me in the past. I don't know two years. I've been. I want to go. I want to go out of um, Phillip Park in a bang. Like I said previously, it's it's just been a blast in general, and I can't wait to to continue. Great. Season. Well, th thank you for sharing that. Let's move on, if I could, to some of the others. Um, and whoever can, what is the best part for you all to be part of the NASA club? Um, what's the best thing about it? So please go ahead and chime in where you can. Reed, go ahead. I think one of the best part about being in the NASIF club and then also leading it for my school is that I got to meet so much new people. I made a bunch of friends on my teams and then I also got to help around with tryouts and organizing club events. So I guess it was another way for me to get more involved in my school and give back to the community. I also got to meet a lot of people with common interests and I really enjoy hanging out with them. Cool. Um, so how about others? Um, Olivia, Chamara or Samuel, what's the best part of being in NASA for you all? Go ahead, Samuel. Um, for me, the best part, honestly, is just the interaction and the competition. I personally am somewhat competitive and just interacting with others that are either as competitive as I am or just simply people who can connect with me in a way that like, we can do something important like that is something that fascinates me. Also, just seeing the different skill levels going up and down, seeing how people can grow. Very cool. And that's what interests me most. How about for, for Jamara or Olivia? What's the best part of NASA for you all? Jamara? I would definitely have to say seeing the result of all your hard work with planning events and seeing how many people come together and they're so excited to, you know, partake in it. And then when you stand, you know, stand back and you realize you just made a whole group of diverse people come together, play a game and just have a moment of fun without any stress, tension or hate. Very cool. And Olivia, if you don't mind, do you, could you share what's the best part of NASEF Club for you? Um, for me, definitely the best part of the club is kind of getting to meet a whole, like, a wide cast of different people um, from different backgrounds for me, uh, from to like being in different grade levels. And a lot of these people I know that I never would have met if not for esports. So it's uh, super exciting and really interesting to get to meet so many different people through something that connects us all. You know, that's really cool to hear from all of you. I would have thought, and maybe some of the people in the audience would have thought that you'd be talking uh, more about title play, competition, winning. But what's really cool to hear is the fact that it's a great place to belong. It's a great place to make friends, um, to build a community, to get to know people, to demonstrate what it is that you like and enjoy, and to do some of those things. So congratulations to all of you for doing that. I'd like to ask all of you another question, if I could, and that is, Reflect for a minute, if you can, you know, share something that you've learned by being part of the NASIF club. It could be about the game or the player, the title or something personal or whatever it may be. But, you know, share something if you could and just raise your hand and I'll call on you. Um, what have you learned by being part of the NASIF club? Yeah, Samuel. 
One thing I've learned actually is that um, anyone can be a leader because um, at the end of the day, there's going to be a situation in your life where you're going to have to be in that type of position. And it doesn't matter if you're ready for it or not. So something I've learned through my experience with uh, NASAF right now is that uh, anyone can be a leader if as long as they have the right support and the right help. Very cool. That's great. It gives people opportunity. How about others? Um, anyone else want to share something that they have learned by being part of the NASAF Esports Club? Yes, Olivia. Um, something that I kind of learned through being part of the NASAF Esports Club is a lot about myself because I used to be a really shy person and kind of like on the quiet side. But being part of esports and the NASAF Club has really helped me kind of come out of my shell. And it's made me grow not only as an individual, but also as a member of the community and really like changed my perspective and outlook on uh, group events and on the things I like to do. Anyone else want to share something they've learned? Yeah, Reed, go ahead. Adding on to what uh, Samuel said, I realized that it takes a group of people to lead. You can't just do it by yourself. And like having my having the staff, faculty, and also the coaches to help me lead my team and other teams is like really helpful. Very cool. And was it uh, Xander that put your hand up? You wanted to share, or Tyler? It was Tyler. Um, Tyler. Yes. So. For the biggest thing I've learned is definitely managing a team and the organization that goes into it. It's by far the most difficult and the most fun thing to do on the team. Um, just seeing how that evolves from when you first put it into motion and it actually being the end result in terms of making said team or um, having planned this event and managing all the people who are going to be operating in that event or in the trial or in that game. It's, it's a lot of responsibility. And I feel like I, I, I'm able to take it now. It's, it's been a lot for me these past four years going from COVID. I'm not going to use that as an excuse, but just here and there managing all these people i'm managing over 100 people in our community right now and it's it's just been a blast all around i i kind of wish for anything more and i wish i can continue that in the future once i graduate from villa park high school uh terrific so you make all you, you all of your responses made me think of something and that is that i had originally thought that maybe all of you were competitive players but it appears that some of you take on other roles. So do you mind sharing with us and all the people who are in the audience, what roles do you play? If it's gaming and you're, if there's a particular game that you compete in, please share that. But if there are other roles that you take on within your club, because our club, as you have discussed, is really about a community. And it's very different than a typical esports competition. So... Xander, I think you had your hand up. Did you want to share what role you play? Yeah, um, I I um, I used to be on the Overwatch team for our school, but I decided that um, I wasn't really cut out to play, and I really wanted to help manage the club. So I help set up events like Tyler, and I help with the technology and any um, like management things we need done. Uh, to help get the club going and help a lot with the Discord. Awesome. How about other folks who are here? Do you want to share what roles you play on your NASEF club? Yeah, Chamara? So for my club, I was in mostly leadership positions, and I really did enjoy helping to plan the events, not just playing. Uh, my favorite part was, you know, helping to guide other students who are helping to plan the events so that, you know, just for clarification that they're doing it correctly, because sometimes people want the reassurance. Others want to share what roles you play in your club? Okay, let me, oh, Olivia, go ahead. 
Okay, so Reed and I both help play a place in management within our club. So we help organize club events, like inviting people who, you know, aren't necessarily competitive players to come and try out a bunch of different games or helping organize the Discord or helping to set up scrims with other schools to help our players get more practice. So outside of uh, being on a team ourselves, we also help out with leadership and kind of getting to see both facets of that is really interesting and helps us gain like a new perspective on what the players really want to do. Very cool. You know, that's one of the things that we talk about at NASEF a lot is the fact that we're not just about playing. We're in competing. We're also about giving people opportunities to pursue other aspects, because as all of you have shared, your clubs would not be successful if there were not people in the roles that you occupy and help put on the tournaments, do the marketing, do the outreach, you know, exhibit the leadership and the like. I'm curious, um, how many students are in each of your clubs? So let me start with... um, Lolani in Hawaii, how many students do you have in your club? So we have approximately 220 students in our club. Well, not wow. all of the, not all of them play competitively, but others are just there to like enjoy attend events and have fun with us. That's awesome. Congratulations to you. Um, how about for Villa Park? How many students are in your club? Nope. Um, we have a little over 100 people right now, and that is in the span of just four years. Right when I joined um, eSports was the first year that it was here, and me and Xander joined together. We've known each other for years, and we've always had the same interests, so we went into this together, and um, we've, we've seen the outcome, and we are very proud of it, and we hope this continues even longer. It, it shows. Thank you. Um, Chamara, how many are in, in your club, if you may? I want to say, I don't know the approximate number, but I want to say it's around nearing 100, maybe a little bit over or a little bit below. Great. And and do you mind, Samuel, if you know, if you have a guess of how many are in your club? Um, the amount? Well, um, when I first started during my freshman year, it was um, around a little more than 50, maybe less. <laughs> but uh, not because of COVID and following CDC guidelines, it is about 30 or less that are allowed in the room. So, but um, my teams and I are like a max of like five people or so. So, Very good. Well, that's what's interesting about NASIF that you all have found. Um, and it's part of the theme of the conversation today. And that is in most uh, competitive play platforms, other types of organizations, It's just a small group of kids who play a title and that's it. But what you've done is you've really built a community. You've brought all kinds of kids together to learn, to support each other, to help each other, take on different roles and responsibilities. So that's really very cool. You know, I'm interested as we're talking, when you first started and you wanted to get into the NACEF club, what did your parents think? (laughs) You know, we hear so many different stories about parents and gaming and toxicity and all the craziness about it. Could you share a little bit about your personal story or others um, on what that is? So Samuel, please do. What did your parents think? Um, at first, my, my parents thought it was a waste of time. And I think that something that a lot of people can relate to. But until I mentioned the word college, um, <laughs> Then they're like, oh, yeah, go ahead. But um, but when it comes to the toxicity thing that you mentioned, uh, I'm actually, I hope you don't mind me sharing this. We actually did have an incident during my freshman year with that. And that's something I tell my team or like my teams every single day or every single meeting, which is we refuse to work with toxicity. Because if we even find the slightest amount of toxicity, we have to kick you out because that's not what this is for. So Very good. So you police yourselves, basically. Yes. You hold each other to a standard of conduct. Exactly. Um, and thankfully, we've only ever had one issue with toxicity, and it was immediately resolved, and that person never came back. Okay. And how about others? What were your or 
some of your other club members, what do their parents think about the development of the NACEF club and you all joining the club? Who would like to share their story? Yeah, go ahead. Tyler? Um, my parents were actually very supportive and um, wanted to help out with the club as much as they could because um, my dad had uh, known about esports and was really, really excited that I was actually getting into it. And um, with some parents in our club, we have had to explain what esports is and the benefits of it. And we, we usually try to um, explain it in a very simple way so that they can understand it. They don't understand video game terms or anything like that. And so, yeah. Very good. How about the others? Do any of you want to share what your parents thought when you said you wanted to join that? Yeah, go ahead, Reed. So when I first tried to join esports, my parents were very supportive, although they didn't really know what esports were. I think at the time when I was a freshman and I'm a junior now, they just wanted me to experience as much as I can at school and just have fun. In terms of my other club members, I know most of the parents are very supportive of the kids doing esports, but some of them are more strict about having to keep up grades and other things like that. Sure. How about for Olivia? Yes. Oh, uh, for me, I come from a household where grades are seen as really important. And um, I have two older sisters as well who have both gone on to go to like great high school, uh, great colleges. So from my, both my parents and my sisters, it was kind of a lot of pressure for me to have a similar high school experience as they did. And no one else in my family really plays video games. So for them, me joining esports was a little bit strange because they all felt like it was something that was atypical for a kind of normal high school path. Um, but after I was in esports club for a while and my parents saw that I was keeping up my grades and the kind of the community and the environment that I was in, they uh, gradually grew to be a lot more supportive. Very cool. Very good. So I'm going to change topics if I may for a second. And Samuel raised a topic that obviously is of concern to parents um, and to you, uh, the toxicity issue, um, the language, the disrespect, the kinds of behavior sometimes, unfortunately, we see in discord in other ways. How do you and your clubs deal with it? We heard from Samuel that they addressed it right away and the person ended up leaving. Um, do you all have codes of conduct? Do you, you know, talk about it? How do you deal with uh, behaviors that you think may not be appropriate? So if anyone could share on that, that would be great. Yeah, Reed, go ahead. So like Samuel, our school does have a general code of conduct where you have to be very respectful towards others and you can't really use explicit language while you're in the lab or on Discord with the teams. So we haven't really had any experiences with toxicity, but in small cases where people will like say maybe a more disrespectful word, we'll kindly pull them aside and ask them why they said it and then tell them not to do it again as a warning. And after that warning, we haven't really seen anybody repeatedly, repeatedly break the rules. Has anyone else encountered issues that you've had to deal with at your school? Yeah, um, go ahead, Tyler. So for us, um, a couple well, a couple weeks ago, we uh, had our Valorant tryout session. It was really great. Um, one of the best um, games I've seen of Valorant actually was against our own players, but back to the topic. Um, we had some players on the enemy team for the second round who were, some of them were new, like freshmen, and we had one uh, senior who wanted to play. And our senior, unfortunately, r rallied them up, and they didn't take it seriously at all. Um, they lost in the end, so it, it backfired on them. Um, but we made sure to not have him on the team we we still he's still he's a good person um but we just want people to know that we do take this seriously and that um it will we do we do hold this in high regard very high regard um not too long ago again we had um josh or one of my friends sorry um who was doing something like that but anyways um, we, we've handled it in a good manner, 
and we haven't had anything like that since. Thank you for sharing. Um, you know, we talk a little bit about some of the things that you're learning and talk if you can, how do you think the skills you're developing in the NASEF Esports Club are going to help you or are helping you in real life, especially as you think about your future? So what, what are the skills you're learning um, that are really helping you today and you think are going to help you as you move forward into college or work? So if you could share some of that, that would be great. Yes, Jamara. I think communication and teamwork is really important. Not only do you learn, you know, how to communicate with your leadership board and your players learn how to communicate with each other. When you go into the real world, like college or you get a job, it's very key that you know how to communicate with the people that you're doing a project with or the people that you're working with so that you can succeed with the project. Very cool. Anyone else want to share? around the skills that they've learned and that they're using. Yes, Andrew. Um, we, uh, we've learned a lot about like management and teamwork in our club. And I feel like it's, um, it's helped me learn how to do like group projects and stuff like that, because I'm able to understand people's needs more when working together. And um, I don't think I would have learned a lot of these skills if it wasn't for esports, because it's really helped us um, learn how to uh, communicate. Very cool. Anyone else before I go on to the next question? Yeah, Reed. I think a nice skill that I learned while doing esports management is the is that I can, I'm held accountable to things. So I have like deadlines, or we need to make sure the club is run smoothly. So being accountable to these standards is like very nice to learn. Very good. L let me move on then. Time is getting short. So I have maybe one or two questions left. Um, for those that are listening that don't know anything about NACEF and the concept of the NACEF club, and they say, wow, this is pretty cool. I like what I'm hearing. It's not just me and a couple of people playing games. It's much more than that. How would you advise them? What steps should they take in their school if they wanted to start a NACEF club? What do you think? What would you tell them to do? What are the important things to do? Samuel, go ahead. Um, uh, I actually, my, my own teacher asked me this one time. And the thing I mentioned to him was that uh, it takes, the most important one is determination. Because if you are not determined to do this, start a club, deal with the people you need to deal with, and then um, get your member. For example, getting members and supplies, that can, that'll always come on its own eventually. But the determination you need to actually keep it up is what's most important. If you don't have that, then it doesn't matter if you have all the equipment or all the members, it's not going to work out as well as you want it to. I've learned that uh a lot this year so good for you good for you how about anyone else can you share some pointers to other students who may be listening xander did you want to say something um yeah i wanted to say that uh when we started the club we we tried to get out there and um talk to people and kind of get get yourself out there is what i'd recommend yeah. and don't be afraid to talk to people. Don't be afraid to um, explain explain the clubs. To um, tell them what games you play. Uh, see what they want, and um, always making sure to just communicate and be involved as much as you can. Because the more the more will everybody has to do the club. I think the greater um, the club can be. Awesome. Any other comments that anyone wants to make on that? Yeah, Reed. I think you just need to make sure that you can find a faculty member or advisor that is supportive of your work. And you also need a group of individuals that you can count on or bounce ideas off or what you want to do. 
And another really important about starting a club is you need to have pride in your work. You can't be ashamed of you're doing esports or other people, or you can't be thinking negatively about what other people are thinking about you. You need to just stay uh, on track on what you're going to do and succeed in it. Very cool. I'm going to ask a final question of everyone, if you could. And that is, you all have done so well. And, it, um, you know, it's just wonderful to hear from you and see all the great things you're doing. Could you share maybe one of your proudest moments being part of the NACEF club and being an esports leader? Yeah, go ahead, uh, Samuel, and then Olivia. Go ahead, Samuel. Um, well, okay, so before I became a captain, um, during my freshman year, when I first started, we went to a tournament over at one of the colleges here in Florida, and we got third place, but just looking at the at my peers and the aura they gave off was amazing. And then this year, I, d I held um, my own tournament as a tryout tournament so I could determine which teams um, I would need. And then just everyone. No one knew each other. Uh, no one knew each other's names. No one knew how each other was. But they all connected simply through Super Smash Bros., which was the game team I was making at the time. Just looking at them and looking into their eyes and seeing how determined they were and just the aura they would give off, the positivity, the connection just in general, watching something so amazing unfold right in front of me, it just, it just made me happy. And seeing others be happy also made me very happy. And I knew this year was going to be a great year because of that. Because it's just what I saw in my own peers that we didn't even know each other, but we still managed to connect on a personal level just through a video game and a tournament that wasn't even, it didn't have a prize or anything. It was completely optional and you didn't have to join. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing. Olivia, you had your hand up. Um, so when I first joined esports as a freshman, our club was only in its, I think, second year of existence. With, and so when I first joined, it was a pretty small club and we had just gotten started. You know, we didn't have many computers. We didn't have like a lot of funding and stuff. And so it was still quite new. And over the years, especially due to like COVID complications in the past couple of years. Um, and so it's been a little bit hard kind of to grow our club. But this year when we hosted tryouts, um, we weren't expecting many people to show up. But then on the day that we held tryouts, the line that we had was so much longer than we thought it would be. And the Discord was more full and active than it's ever been. And kind of that feeling of seeing how our club has grown from being just like a small group of a few teams and then a couple of their friends who like playing video games as well, who are mainly all seniors with like a couple people in my grade, but not many. Um, and watching that grow from something that small to something that has people from, you know, all four years of high school, even a few middle schoolers involved in the club as well. Um, and watching how our lab has grown and we've like, gotten more resources and just watching that growth and that journey has been a really wonderful experience. Wow. Congratulations to you as well. Um, others want to share, um, they're proud, you know, some of the things we're proud of Jamara. So one of the things that I'm most proud of with my history of esports is last year we were completely online due to COVID and we, my group, we still found a way to try and host like an events by, you know, sending out surveys, seeing which games were popular, seeing which devices they had so that we can find something compatible for most students that were with us. You know, through all the difficulties and trial and error, you know, extending some deadlines and whatnot, we were still able to create a successful event that had so much positive feedback. I know we were supposed to like end at two, but we ended up keeping it going on for about three more hours just because <laughs> students were just very excited to, you know, interact, even, you know, because you're at home for so long by yourself. It was just a really good time. People were interacting, you know, playing games. And I find that that was really amazing that we could do that just through, you know, some hard work, dedication and, you know, games. Cool. And how about from Villa Park? Any of you guys want to share 
something that you're proud of with your work in esports in NASA? Yeah. Um, one of my proudest moments was when we were trying in freshman year, we weren't allowed to play on campus and me and a couple other members went to the school board to speak about how we would like to play on campus and we'd like to have esports approved to be a valid club on campus. And we ended up succeeding in that. And it was a really, really proud moment for us because we felt like we were losing losing a battle, I guess. And we, we had actually been able to get out of it and um, play on be able to play on campus. And I felt really accomplished and I felt like we, we had really done something amazing. And I don't know about you, Tyler. Yeah, for me, it's, it's a little different. Mine is not as big as his, um, but the biggest things that I've done this year, I, I've probably mentioned it before, but um, I've been the one who's been my main job right now, not as in just management for the entire um, esports team. I am proudly the one who is the strategist, so to speak, of our Valorant team. And it's it's not a big win, we but we still I'm still proud of it because our team pulled together um, for our Valorant preseason match yesterday, and we won by more than half the score. And I feel very confident in our upcoming games as well. And it's, I'm, I'm definitely gonna be paying more work for, for our team and our community in general. And I can't wait to see where that goes. Well, thank you all. And I have to say, as I conclude one, I'm incredibly proud of all of you, the work that you've done, the growth you've experienced, just coming online like this and being able to share your personal experiences and talk about what NACEF is really all about, which is obviously fun and play and camaraderie, but all the lessons you can learn in the leadership and the skills you can develop, that's really what NACEF is all about. And you are great examples, each and every one of you, about who we are, our value structure, what we stand for, so congratulations to all of you for the wonderful things you've done. And for those of you who are out in the audience, um, I hope you're as proud as these individuals as I am. And if you'd like to learn more about NASEF, please go to our website at nasef.org. And there's a little blue button there that says get started. And we're there to help. One of the things that was not mentioned was all of our work all of our learning, our toolkits, our curriculum, everything we do is 100% free to schools, after-school programs, libraries, YMCAs, and the like. This year, our two titles that we're doing for free are Rocket League and Chess. We'll be doing others that will be coming about. We'll be doing Rube Goldberg again in the spring. We'll be doing Farmcraft, which is global and worldwide again. So we'll be doing a lot of different things that will be available for all of you. So with that said, I just want to thank all of you for being part of this panel today, for sharing your stories. Please thank your teachers as well, your, your coaches, your GMs, for allowing you the opportunity to sit here and to share your stories with us. And with that, we wish you a very healthy and good and productive um, fall, fall season, school year, and in whatever careers you do, I'm sure you will be shining examples for all of us. So with that said, thank you all very much. Thank you for attending and appreciate your time. Have a great day, everyone.